And a lot of folks felt like it came down to him being unhappy with booking. Dusty. Yes. Yeah, specifically dusty. It feels booking. as if Ricky didn't have any confidence in dusty that dust. He didn't feel like he was one of dusty's guys. Is that fair to say? Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that until about two, maybe two years ago, I saw Ricky when we were talking about that. And I, I, for some reason I'd forgotten that part in the history of our relationship. I, I'd forgotten why I left, but that they, they just didn't get along. And I'm, I'm not sure why I think dusty was the featured guy and, and Rick and Rick thought he should be that guy. And then he wasn't going to get in that position as long as dusty was there who deserved to be there too. It was, it was, a, it was it's a tough call. So, Ultimately, uh, Steamboat's had enough of the WWF travel schedule, and he's going to take a 10 month, uh, leave of absence from pro wrestling. And then he makes a surprise return on January 21st, 1989 in the WCW show. Uh, it's at the Atlanta television studios. Uh, he's going to be, uh, Eddie Gilbert's partner. Mm-hmm. And, um, they're going to go ahead and, um, defeat you and Barry Windham with steamboat getting the pin on you. And that really yeah. sets up the match here in Chicago on February 20th. But when you first heard that steamboats coming back, well, I reached out to him. I'm the one who brought him back. Okay. Tell, tell us that story. How does that happen? I just told George Scott, I said, George, you gotta get, we need, we need, you know, some money that's got big time TV and some of this really good on the roster here. You know, just, we were, we were, we were just limited in it. And, uh, I called him. He said, "Yeah, you know, and then I, I wasn't part of the negotiation, but he came in, and uh, I mean, he's Ricky Steamboat. He was a big time player, and it just had that, like you say, one of the most celebrated matches in the history of WrestleMania, if not the business." Yeah, uh, so he means, he's hot. And I guess we should just add some context. This is the era where Dusty had just recently left, and so with Dusty sort of out of the way. Uh, now George Scott, a name we don't hear or talk about a lot. Can you tell us about George Scott and what his, uh, position in the company was? He was a booker, just very similar to what he was in, uh, um, in, in, in North Carolina for Crockett. And, and he'd already, he'd, he'd already booked for WWE up there as well. That's he what I want to do. Huh? He, he was a big part of, I believe Ricky Steamboat following to the WWF and then ultimately the success he had there. And now he's coming back. So they had George George played a large part in a lot of our careers. I don't know why we don't talk about that enough. Why do you think Mr. Scott's more of a forgotten name to history these days? Because they don't remember the, they, they only remember and talk about the bookers that were, were, that were workers and, and George kind of walked away from working early in his career not only as a single, but as a tag team with his brother, Sandy, to focus on the booking and, and, and working in the office. He liked that a lot. And, and he was really respected by the guys legitimately, a, you know, a tough guy, but he just a, a good guy, honest. And you could talk to him without, you know, knowing you, you could talk to him without and knowing you weren't just getting a bunch of bullshit. Let's, um, yeah, George Scott is was a huge part of my life and success. I'll always say that. I'm sure Ricky will say the same thing. Wahoo McDaniels would. I mean, he made a lot of us, you know, he made a lot of us a lot of money. 